Hey everyone, once bitten here with another battle report. So we have a rematch between my Bretonians and the Heartless Bretonian Army. Uh, 2,000 points, meeting engagement. And again, we're trying uh, special Bretonian rules where uh, the Lance Formation grants Devastating Charge and Peasants are Weapon Skill 3. And I think we decided that that did not apply to Bowmen, but applied to Men-at-Arms and Grail Relic. Yeah, this is uh, this is going to be another dual port report, and you're right that it rep it applies to fighting peasants. So that's men at arms and grail relics, but not archers. So, all right. So we'll go through uh, the army list. Okay, so I have ranking ink archers here on the left hand side, and a trebuchet way in the back. Uh, the main core of my army is uh, a pe peasant horde, the grail relic. Uh, just out of frame is my my. BSB with the standard of discipline. Uh, the reason she's got that Grail Val is just so I can take the Grail Relic because you need a Grail Knight to do it. Uh, also, I have a Damsel back there with a uh, scroll. And then in my Knight unit, there's there's uh, 11 Knights, my General with a uh, plus 2 attack and Heroic Killing Blow and a 1-up armor save. And then right behind him, I don't know if you can see, is another Mage, and she's level 2 with the Icon of Quinnells. And this army is... Um, it's kind of made so I don't necessarily have to pray. So, because I only have two units that that benefit the blessing, the the Grail Relic and the the Knight Lance. So if I if I don't pray, I just give the the knights the blessing and go from there. Well, your mages too. Uh, yeah, but meh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> well, because well, one mage would be okay. Yeah. And then I had one unit of peasants uh, roll a one, so they had to come in the reserve. So I had to deploy first, and I kind of knew he was going to go first. So uh, let me just throw a plug in there that I hate that. But anyway, so I got Peg Knights on my far right, uh, nine Questy Knights. I have um, Knights of the Realm, 15 of them with the Banner of Swiftness. Uh, my Paladin's in there with uh, two up rerollable Sword of Might and a Prophetess level four. Uh, Book of Asher, which gives her plus one to cast and dispel. Uh, there's notes on my Knight unit. Then I have, a, to the left of them, 12 Knights Errant with an Errantry Banner and some Fast Cav. And then I have seven Grail Knights that uh, weren't able to, to start uh, start the game on the board. Okay, so since I didn't pray, I, I got to go first. Um, and after my Vanguard moves, uh, my Fast Cavalry come up and, and pull the sneaky block move on the right-hand side, kind of similar to what I did in the the last game with the Beastmen. So they're blocking the Questing Knights, and then they're also kind of pseudo-blocking the Pegasus Knights. Pegasus Knights can just fly over them if they want, but if they did charge, that would be a flank charge and not a front charge. Um, and then everything else just kind of waddles up to kind of maybe get in range to do some charges later on. So this is kind of a close-up to see... Uh, the Pegasus Knights would be a, a flank charge if they decided to get suckered into that charge on the Fast Cav, and they are blocking the the Questing Knights, but that big unit of, of Knights on the left flank, they're just out of line of sight for them, so they can't be charged. And his General's unit has the Banner of Swiftness, so um, they've got a, a real long charge they can make. So, more pictures of the same. Okay, and this is just highlighting that... Um, my peasant horde came on, and then my damsel snuck inside that big questing knight or that big uh, knight unit and popped the the icon. So now that unit has the blessing. Uh, and then I, I miscast getting the curse um, on the the big knight unit. So this is basically like another unit of fast cab blocking this unit because he's probably not going to charge. We saw the kind of damage that it can do that spell can do in the last game against the beastmen and. You know, losing gores sucks, but losing knights really sucks. So um, they're probably not going to march or charge next turn. Uh, the, the miscast is significant because I did the one where every every mage takes a strength six hit, and it, it put a wound on both of my mages. Um, this this blurry picture is a, a precursor to um, well, well, we'll show it later. But my my. Peasant archers on horseback here came up, marched, and, and shot into Questing Knights. So I need a 5 to hit, 4 to wound, and then a 2-plus armor save. And uh, I bagged a knight here. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was just great. It's probably why the picture's so good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then my other unit got lucky and bagged. Oh, it's not as impressive as a knight, but it's another guy on horseback. So uh, they shot from the flank and killed that guy. And then my big unit of our, uh, archers uh, did a couple more wounds, and now there's only one one lone little little yeoman there left. 
who passed his panic test, yep. which I appreciated. <laughs> so we go to OB turn one. Um, if you look at the far right, my Grail Knights come on. My, I take the Questy Knights into the uh, Fast Cav. My thinking is I'm just going to... Um, I'm assuming I'm going to beat him, then I'm just going to reform. And I take my Peg Knights into his General's unit, and my thinking was I would... I would um, I was hoping I'd be able to win combat, or if I lost, not by so much that, that I couldn't stick around. And um, then hoping on his turn, he'll probably beat the Peg Knights and maybe overrun, miss my Questy Knights, and that would give me the charge with my Questy Knights into his General's unit. So I'm kind of sacrificing the Peg Knights there, just hoping to, to weaken that unit a little bit and hold them up. Uh, take my, my lone fast cab and march him up. And in, in a way, it's kind of a blunder here. I, I meant to put him so that if the Grail Relique charged it, they would have, they'd be in his flank. And so they would turn sideways to the main battle. And then if he won, he would just reform and he would still kind of be behind his other unit. But I just kind of threw my guy up there and uh, the angle is such that it's actually 50-50. Yeah, all, all, all that needs to happen is he just needs to rotate to the left one or two degrees, and then that easily makes it a, a flank charge, and that would have slowed that unit up, and probably the unit right next to him, because I don't want to break my battle line up, so it, it slows up two units, and that's like 500 points it slows up, so it gives you more time to, to move around. Yeah, I see a recurring theme of uh, <laughs> take, take an, extra, like an extra moment and do what it is you plan on doing. So there's a close-up of that. We're here, you're rooting for the Peg Knights. Uh, there's the Grail Knights coming on. And then this is just <laughs> awesome. So during the shooting phase, my lone <laughs> my lone yeoman shoots at his level two and hits her and wounds her. Yeah, that's eye for an eye, right? I mean, I, I begged your questing knight, so you got my level two mage, right? That's, that's a fair trade-off, right? <laughs> that was just beautiful. I, that, stuff like that makes my knight. Oh, this stuff, stuff like this makes my knight. Uh, so, <laughs> my, my general, remember, he's got plus two attack and heroic killing blow, and since he's faster than the questing knight, he goes first, and he decides to whop off three Pegasus knights that had uh, flesh to stone buff on them. <laughs> I was so pissed. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> so, yeah, he has six attacks and uh, got three heroic killing blows. I thought that was just wonderful. Uh, so that plan didn't work, <clears throat> by the way. But what happened was he... <laughs> <laughs> he beat, he destroyed him through combat res, and so my, my champion fled, and he tried to restrain and failed on leadership nine, and then rolled a ton to pursue him, and then we fought the fast cab battle, and I beat the fast cab and overran with my questy knights, which gave me a flank charge to his general's unit, so... Did, 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 <laughs> did you plan? That was that was all planned yeah, out, right? Yeah, it wasn't planned at all. It was a total <laughs> screw up that, that uh, I, I thought, I'm like, wow, I, I couldn't have hoped for it better. This is just beautiful. <laughs> Um, yeah, we'll fight that next turn. So it's next turn. Okay. Uh, I I charged the the little fast cab unit, and as we've kind of precluded there, it uh, it really wasn't a flank charge, so it's not slowing me up too badly. My archers, they're not really in a position to shoot at anything, so they're just going to go ahead and start moving forward and maybe get some shots later on in the game. Uh, and then my my horde moves up. And then I had that last unit of fast cav, and they decide to block the big, big unit of of knights there because I think I'm probably going to be steadfast against the questing knights. Um, so I'll be there round two. I just I just don't want all those those knights to hit me in the flank if I decide to reform, or hit me in the front if I don't decide to reform. Uh, and then my my peasant horde way in the back, they kind of position themselves so. Um, if I am there a turn from now, uh, I'll be able to flank charge all those questing knights, and that'll be massive combat res my way. Yeah, so I'm really thinking that with one less Grail Knight and one less Knight of the Realm, I could have had a 10-man archer unit in that building, saving me a lot of grief. But there we go. Go, Yeoman. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're pissed because their mage is dead. So close up with that. Uh, so I, in the magic phase, I got the Wyson's Wild Form, which doesn't really help me against his his great weapon attacks because he's still wounding me on twos, even though I'm toughness four. But it gives me strength four on my guys and my ponies, and against a questing knight who's only got a three plus armor save in combat, now he's got a four plus armor save, and he doesn't get the boosted uh, blessing. So I, I actually uh, kill two questing knights. The, the 
remember that these questing knights, they have um, devastating charge, so killing those guys before they get to go, I just stopped four strength six attacks. That's that's huge because now instead of 20 attacks or whatever it is, they get 16 or you know whatever the number adds up to be. But like man, that. it, that's scary with all those. That devastating charge is whew, that's tough on units that don't rely on on steadfast to win combats. It was actually a relatively bloodless fight. I mean, you only killed two. The general probably should have killed more than two. Your knights, like you said, there's only two knights fighting, but they were strength four. Um, but then I had 12 attacks, strength six. I killed one guy. Yeah, I think I just got lucky in my ward saves. Well, it was just a relatively <clears throat> bloodless fight, which, uh, yeah, which was un uh, unfortunate. Let's see. So we go to my next turn. I take my big unit and charge his fast cap unit just to get the damn guys dead. I take the Grail Knights into the flank of his general's unit, and I'm confident I could win that, um, I, I, but I better win it and run, pursue far enough to get out of line of sight of his, of his men-at-arms unit at the very top because my, quest, my uh, Grail Knights aren't going to be able to flee, and if they get flank charged, it's not going to go well for them. Uh, here at the bottom, took the, the uh, Knights Errant into the face of that big... Uh, men at arms unit. So what I was thinking was, one, I think he's going to be steadfast no matter what. What I was hoping to do, though, is t take my level four with Lore of Life, and she's got the Awakening of the Woods spell, and just throw six dice, or get the Throne of Vines up, and then throw six dice Awakening of the Wood on the BSB. If I could kill the BSB, then they'd be steadfast on a five or six not re-rollable. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't have champions in my units anymore So because I was stretching for points. So, the, the, yeah, leadership five, steadfast, pff, that's a fail. Yeah, so what the, <clears throat> what the real fail is is that after I decided on that plan and did all the moves, then I, I looked at this magic card and the range is 18 inches on Awakening the Wood and I was 19 inches away from the BSB. So I thought that was kind of dumb. That's why you got to put your mages in the front rank of a Bretonian lance so you can get that extra two inches. Never mind the fact that I can punch her in the face with my <laughs> hero killing blow general at that point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so this was funny. The Grail Knights go in there and they do their job. They, they kill a number of guys. Um, and I was really excited when I, when I got him down to where uh, he wouldn't be steadfast anymore. The problem is by the time I did it, the, que the Grail Knights were no longer in combat. His, his unit was was facing south. This is at, this picture is after they reformed. So they were facing south. The, the Grail Knights were out of combat, so he was steadfast because he had more ranks than my questing knights. So that kind of hurt. Yeah, this this is just one of those weird comedy of error combats where you kill just enough to get your, your Grail Knights out of combat. And since they're out of combat, only their kills count. They're, they're charged, their uh, well, flank doesn't matter because you already had a flank, but charge and rank and standard, none of that matters. It's, it's, just, it's just their kills. So you killed enough to get them out of combat, but you didn't kill enough because now I have my front rank and a rank bonus, and then your questing knights were only just... Uh, one rank, so I'm steadfast all of a sudden. It was just, it was just un unlucky, is all it was. Well, unlucky for you, but super lucky for me because I was dead to rights there. Well, yeah. I did get lucky in getting my Grail Knights out of sight of the Men at Arms because had I not done that, it would have been doubly bad. Men at Arms would come into the flank of the Grail Knights, and it, ugh. so anyway, his fast calf's dead. I reformed just um, to help out with that combat. And we go to MP turn three. All right, so uh, a pair of counter charges in the flank here. My my uh, peasants down against the the uh, knights errant held. And I want to talk about this for a moment because this is a really good showcase of both of the the unique trial rules that we're trying: a devastating charge on knights in lance formation, and weapon skill three on peasants. So what that means is <clears throat> that unit of twelve knights instead of getting twelve attacks or thirteen attacks, whatever it normally gets, it gets twenty attacks. But they only hit me on fours because my guys are weapon skill three and knight errant are only weapon skill three. Um, and even with all those attacks, he couldn't break my steadfast. So while devastating cha charge sounds devastating, it, you can't just you can't just blunder into the throat of a unit like like I mean even toughness three men in arms you have to you have to pull flank charges or co charges and stuff like that uh, because then this happens I, I'm steadfast. Um, and then my Grail Relic comes into the flank, and that's a huge, massive combat res sw 
swing that I don't even have to do a whole bunch of wounds and break that unit. And it's the same thing up there at the top with my my um, my other peasant horde. They charge in the flank of the uh, the questing knights. So I think that's a that's a close up. And another quick angle of this one here. Yeah, that's not going to go well. <laughs> so, um, so every time I cast a spell this game, I'm super worried that I'm just going to throw dice away because I, I've only got plus two, and then Ob's got plus five to dispel. So I'm just oversaturating my my magic. And this this one, I I cast Savage Beast on my general and pop my mage's head off, and I got lucky again. It only did a strength six hit to every caster on the board, which was her, and she died from it. But you know, if I rolled a seven, everything that's touching her takes strength ten. Man, that would killed all my my knight units, and that would have been a huge blunder. Uh, it really wasn't worth it, but, you know, my, my general's got plus two attacks, so he's, str he's six attacks, plus three makes it nine. Man, that feels good. Nine attacks out of one model is, it, you just, you don't get to do that very often, and when you do, you just, you know, you're, you're, you're pretty happy. Yeah, that's a nice spell. Uh, so, my, my big combat res, I, I break the questing knights, and my peasants overrun, and I need a nine to get into those knights, and I roll an eight. So now I'm an inch away from 800,000 attacks from a, a giant quasi, or a, a giant knight unit, and then on the left flank, of course, I break that that uh, knight errant unit, and I, I chase him with the peasants, and I figure eh, they've got him, they've got him now. Uh, so the the relic kind of sits back to to maybe pull some flank charges later on, and, but I can't run the knights down; they're just too fast. So this is this is them uh, pursuing the. The knight's errant, and I'm thinking, you know, if he's either going to go off the table, or if he doesn't, he'll turn around, and now I don't have to contend with his charge or his blessing, so I can probably beat him uh, just by charging him uh, later. Oh, yeah, easily. All right, so um, my knight's errant rally, my uh, BSB's unit goes into the face of the men-at-arms. I'm actually really worried about this, but I do have a ton of attacks. Just, oh my gosh, that was actually, that was 10 minutes of dice rolling right there. <laughs> Uh, I take, I reform my, my Grail Knights at the top middle. I like where my Grail Knights are positioned to help out. Um, the problem is with the the only combat that matters, well, the only combat, um, if I can, if I can't break him, I'm going to get countercharged by the Grail Relique and maybe his General's unit. If I do break him, I'm probably still going to get countercharged. So either way, that's not looking wonderful for me. So nice of these guys to stick around and play a little bit longer. There's that. And, yeah, so I beat him in combat and ran him down, but, yeah, there, there's really no way I was going to roll enough. Uh, so in hindsight, we, we were talking about maybe I should have just reformed and at least taken that charge in the face. Yeah. We, I, I kind of want to add, you know, this is I, – I talked two seconds ago about how the Knights errant they – you can't charge in the front of a unit and, and expect to win. Um and then that's exactly what he does here. He charges Knights of the Realm right into the throat of my unit, and he crushes them. What's, what gives? Well, you know, just kind of ignore the mage, because she's not really a combat unit, per se. But, you know, that unit of Knights plus the BSB, man, that's you're talking about almost 600 points. They should be able to crack a 200-point peasant, you know, infantry unit like that. Uh, and it's got to be the onus on the other player to, to redirect that charge with fast cavalry or slow him down with magic or do something. Hit him with a stubborn unit, get, get in the way. Some, something to do to, to you know, weaken that charge because you know, if 600 points, by all rights, he should be able to, to crack that on the charge. Yeah. Uh, so this is my turn. Uh, I actually sat there and debated for a minute, like, do I really want to flank charge him? How dangerous is that BSB? And then, you know, I'm like, well, these these opportunities don't come very often. So I went ahead and charged him in the flank, and he had he really had no uh, choice but to take it because if he had fled, the 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 size of that unit would have either put him off the table or put me too close. So I would I would just killed him. Um, the peasants down in the lower left recharged the the knights errant, and then. My general, I'm like, you know what, those Grail Knights, it's inevitability for them to get into combat. He's going to go play Gandalf and say, you shall, shall not pass, get in the way, and then maybe maybe I'll have a unit that's ready to actually receive the charge in a, in a reasonable fashion instead of getting flanked or something like that. So, And then the, the Knights just kind of run off and uh, play points denial at this point. Yeah, Don't, but I was worried about that general. As he does, did again when he did my Peg Knights, that'd be ugly. Anyway, so close up. Close up. 
And I, I do have the toughness buff on my knights, so you know if he beats me, it's gonna be through combat res, not through wounds. But I, I beat you anyway. Yeah, any to both because you killed a couple, <laughs> and, and uh, yeah, so uh, so the BSB is dead, which I thought was you know worse than it could have been. Uh, <laughs> This was, you know, almost an auto win. I actually did pretty well fighting with my Knight's Errant, but it just didn't matter. I couldn't beat the static combat res, but he can't chase me. Yeah. And I, I didn't kill a single one, even without, you know, you having the blessing. So it's just frustrating because I'm like, I want these guys off the table. And, you know, I don't want to let him not get kicked off the table because then I haven't earned a single point aside from killing your standard, which is 25. But, you know, that, that Knight unit is worth way more than that. So, yeah. So uh, I feel like we've been here before. Uh, both knight units rally, and um, they're getting ready to get charged again by peasants. Uh, Grail knights take their uh, anger out on the general. Um, I had to take three dangerous terrain tests and passed them all, which was nice. And so we, when we get to combat, uh, he issues a, a challenge, and uh, I, I don't accept it because I think I'd rather just get all those attacks. I mean, that's three attacks Per knight on the outside. That, that is a lot of strength six attacks. <laughs> so what happened here, and I had fleshed a stone, so he didn't kill any of my grail knights. Um, I, I only put two wounds on him. I mean, I had a ton of attacks. I did two wounds, he runs away, I pursue him and run him down. Then I roll three dangerous terrain tests for the three knights that were in the woods, and I roll three once. <laughs> And then, and then no blessing because you declined a challenge. So it's just <laughs> the odds are what one in two hundred, yeah, two hundred something. It's just silliness. So, I can't kill any Grail knights, but the trees are doing it okay. Yeah, trees are doing just fine. So anyway, that's what it looks like afterwards. This is what the third charge. Yeah. Rinse, and re <laughs> rinse and repeat. So there's that. There's there's that. Uh, they finally did it. Yeah, I finally, I finally chased the errant knights off the table, and then I, I over. They're not actually there. They, they overran off the table so they can get out of uh, charge range from all the Grail knights. Yeah. And then uh, the the big knight lance. They, they just can't stand up against that combat res, the static combat res. You know, knights that don't charge are only strength three, so they're on e equal par with me. Um, and without the BSB for a reroll, I, I kicked him off the table, and I'm like, you know what, he's so long, he's just going to flee off, so I reformed. So um, I want to get the the Grail Knights out of charge range of these uh, of the Grail Relique and get them closer to his unit that's coming on the table, but I fail my leadership test, so I can't march. So he, he it will be a, a decent roll, but he, uh, he can still reach me. And I do. <laughs> So this is a, a rear charge on the Grail Knights with my Grail Relic. And uh, I, I, I kill a couple Knights. I, I think I kill one Knight and uh, beat him through combat res and he loses his standard bear. But, but beyond that, it's, it's the end of the game. Yeah. So kind of a butt kicking. I really, the biggest problem I had was I, I got bottled up in the corner and didn't have any, I felt that I didn't have any choice but to make some head-on-head -head charges, which didn't work, and I think for the most part it shouldn't work. You know, cavalry wasn't meant to charge in the face of a bunch of of uh, ranked-up infantry. Well, I mean, if you can get a, you know, with Devastating Charge, if you could co-charge two lances into one unit, you would easily crack them. And it's like I was saying earlier, man, that would be like 700 points going into one 200-point unit. By all rights, you should be able to crack them on the charge. Um, but still, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're worrying about... All right, if I get one lance in, but I don't get the other, I'm screwed. If if I don't overrun far enough, I'm screwed. Maybe he's stupid lucky, and you know I buff, biff the roll, and then I'm screwed. So it's yeah, it's, it's tricky. Uh, th this scenario doesn't really play well for for Bretonians at play because a lot of times you're gonna have to set up first, and then you go last, and that's man, that's not very fair. Yeah. Now one thing we looked up in the rules is if uh, as when in a meeting engagement, it does. It says that you don't you don't have to deploy for the units that roll two or higher. It says you can deploy, and so we're thinking about if you're Bretonian, you have to set up first. Just don't put anything on the table. Yeah, put your trebuchet down and all your knights. Pff, there's no sense in putting them on the table. You're going to take shooting, and your opponent's going to set up in response to you. So my heroic killing blow general with six attacks, man, the giant's going to go on the opposite side of the table from him. And my unit with the flaming attacks, the the, the trolls are going to go on the opposite side. But the way that the rules are written there, it's I think it says can deploy if you roll a two or higher, not must deploy. So can deploy 
it, to, to us has, well, I, I can, but I'm not going to, so yeah. my deployment is nothing, and now you deploy first, and then you go first, and then I'll come on wherever I want as a reserve. I, I think that's a sneaky, but, uh, you know, barring the, the alternative is, is a good play. Yeah, and so you might see me doing that sometime soon just to see how it works. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm real curious to not only see that, but also see the look on your opponent's face and, and f- see them fervently flipping through the rule book to you know, prove you wrong. That's not fair. You know? And yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that's it. Another dual battle report. Hope you enjoyed it.